Hello dear students, I welcome you all back to this part number 2 of the chapter Iswaran the Storyteller. I am Sham Panchal from Takshila Model Senior Secondary School. So our students, in this lecture today we are going to discuss part number 2. And this chapter has been taken from class 9 book Moments. This is chapter number 3, Iswaran the Storyteller. So it was the last part of this chapter we discussed 5 points, right? Uh, when you watch that video, uh, those 5 points covered the text uh, available at page number 12 and 13. And here we are going to read the text available at page number 14, 15 and 16. So students, uh, we do not need to take a recapitulation. You just need to get back to the previous video that I uploaded here, right? So, students, let us now move on to the part number two. And in the part number two, I have written the vocabulary words and the points to be discussed, right? In the last uh, lecture of this chapter, lecture number one, I mean, the part number one, we had discussed five points, right? But this time we have only three points to be discussed, right? So, Students, the first point is Eastwind's uh, story of a tusker. So, uh, students, it is the last uh, part of this chapter. We ended the chapter at Eastwind's habit of telling the story and in which way uh, he actually uh, taught the story, told the story, right? So, in this Part number two, in the first point, we are going to read about Eastwind's story of Tusker. So, Eastwind was a great storyteller, right? And he did not use just a simple way of narrating the incidents, right? Narrating the events. He used a very, uh, uh, very extraordinary way of narrating the incidents. Uh, we read about one example in the text in the last lecture. Uh, when he saw an uprooted tree on the highway, how he actually... Uh, narrated the simplest of the events, right, in his own unique way. So, now, what is this a story for Tusker and how actually he began this story? So, uh, Eastwan used to tell stories to his master Mahindra. So, uh, one day Eastwan started his story by telling his master Mahindra that he came from uh, a town, uh, a place of timber right so uh, he started telling that uh, the place where he came from was actually surrounded by a uh, thickly wooded forest and uh, there were very huge very big logs logs here means l-o-g log log means very uh, heavy uh, trunk of a tree is called a log so uh, very heavy logs were carried on to the lorries right and uh, these lorries were then uh, dragged by the Elephants by the Tuskers. Tusker is a word for elephant. So here he just started the most important pigment of his story, and that is the Tusker. So he said the Tuskers, which are quite uh, enormous in size, right? Very huge creatures on it on this earth. And when they go wild, they become uncontrollable, right? So uh, he says. So uh, he told that. One day, a tusker escaped from a timber yard. What happened? One day, an escape. Uh, one day, a tusker escaped from a timber yard, and uh, the tusker became quite uh, uncontrollable. Right? Uh, it started running from one place to another, and whatever came its way, he started damaging it. He started destroying it. He started stamping uh, the bushes. Uh, with his feet and uh, he, he just started tearing up the uh, creepers creepers means wild plants right so he started tearing up the creepers and uh, he started breaking the branches of the tree so the tusker actually went wild and uh, it became uncontrollable even the mahot mahot is uh, is a person who just uh, controls an elephant, right? It's called Maho. So even the Mahat was unable to control this elephant, this tusker. So uh, what actually happened, this tusker started destroying everything that came its way. 
right? So first of all, uh, it just came uh, to the town of Iswaran. Iswaran added this. He told this to his master Mahindra while he was narrating this story, right? So he told that this tusker came to his town and uh, first he came onto the, the tusker came onto the road and it started smashing all the stalls which offered vegetables, fruits and all, right? Uh, so he started damaging everything whatever came its way. It started damaging everything whatever came its way. So when Eastern was narrating this incident, right? When Eastern was narrating this event of the Tusker, he did what? He just stood up from his place where he was sitting on the floor and he started stamping his feet in the, emul uh, in the emulation of the mad elephant. Emulation here means imitation. So just like he narrated about the elephant, that elephant, the Tusker started stamping his feet, right? Uh, so in the same way, Eastwan started imitating the actions done by the Tusker. So in the emulation of the, in the sorry, in the emulation of the mad elephant, emulation means in the imitation of the mad elephant, the way elephant reacted, uh, the way elephant acted, the same way, uh, the same way was imitated by East, uh, Eastwan in front of his master Mahindra. So as I told you in the last lecture of this. Uh, chapter that uh, each one whenever narrated a story he used to just bring out uh, the expressions using expressions uh, he used to show the various expressions with the help of his face his hands so uh, this is uh, what each one did when he was just explaining this story to his uh, master Mahindra right so uh, what happened he further added that uh, uh, this Tusker came onto the road and it is it uh, it is smashed all the uh, small stalls which offered fruits and uh, earthen pots right and the stalls of cloths and all so he smashed everything and uh, what happened then finally it came uh, to the school playground right the school playground where some children were playing uh, it just entered the school play playground by uh, just making a hole into a brick wall of the playground. It uh, entered the playground, right? And uh, all the children, all the boys got frightened and they started running to their classrooms. They locked themselves in their classrooms, right? Uh, it did what? It also caused a lot of damage in the playground. What else did the Tusker do in the playground? What were the things that the Tusker did? It did what? First of all, uh, it uh, uh, broke the football goal post, right? And uh, it pulled out the football uh, goal post. And uh, it, it did what? It uh, just uh, tore the volleyball net, which was uh, placed in the playground, right? It also did what? It just kicked and flattened a drum, which was kept for water. And uh, it also... Uh, pulled out all the uh, uh, all the bushes which were uh, available in the playground right so doing all this it did what it was just grunting uh, it was just holding uh, and it looked very frightening right so all the teachers of the school all the staff of the school just went uh, onto the rooftop of the school building right even uh, this uh, even Eastern was also uh, with the teachers on the rooftop of the building, right? So uh, at this point, uh, Eastwan told his master that something came over him and he could not just control himself. He did what? He just snatched, took one uh, stick from uh, the hand of his teacher, from the hand of one of his teachers, and he did what? He just came down the staircases, right? He came down the staircases to the ground and he was just standing a few, a uh, uh, little distance away, right, a small distance away from the Tusker, the Tusker which was grunting in anger, in rage. And Eastwan said that he was holding a stick in his hand and he moved forward to that mad elephant, right. So uh, what actually happened when he moved forward to this mad elephant? The elephant was grunting, holding. And uh, it was quite angry. So 
the elephant actually caused great damage. So a great depredation was caused by the mad elephant. Depredation means damage. A great depredation was caused by the mad elephant, right? So Eastwood was standing with a stick in his hand and with a great jerk of his body, what Eastwood did, Eastwood just uh, whacked the stick onto the third toenail of the elephant of the tusker. And what happened? For a moment, the tusker became stunned. Stunned means uh, it uh, stood still without making a movement. And uh, the second moment, there was a certain uh, shiver on the elephant's body. It has started shivering from head to toe. And at the final moment, what happened? The elephant collapsed. The tusker collapsed and it fell onto the ground, right? Totally unconscious. So, saying this, Eastman would just stop the story. He would just uh, stand up and move. And he would just as tell his master that he is just uh, going to warm up the food, right? Uh, and uh, when he would come back, Eastman would not start the story on himself, right? Uh, on his own, he would uh, be reminded by Mahindra that uh, the story is still un incomplete. And it was, it, is, it was then he started the story. He would then say, uh, he then told his master that uh, then finally uh, the people came. The uh, people came and they just revived the elephant by giving some uh, medicine or something, right? And uh, when the elephant was brought back to consciousness, it was led back to the timber yard where it came from by the maho, right? So uh, it, it is at this point that his master Mahindra would ask him how he actually uh, did this, how he actually got the idea of hitting that stick onto the third toenail of the elephant that uh, the elephant uh, became totally uh, helpless and it uh, fell onto the ground. So to this question, uh, Eastman answered that uh, it is it was some kind of Japanese art like uh, uh, karate or jiu-jitsu, right? Uh, jiu-jitsu. So uh, he told us that he learned uh, or he just read it from some book that uh, uh, when you just uh, when we just uh, hit a particular animal or a person on a certain place of its body, right? The animal or the human being can be uh, unconscious with the uh, strike of that particular uh, thing, right? So this is what Iswaran told his master Mahindra. The stories that Iswaran told to his master Mahindra were incredible to him, were not credible to him. Credible here means believable. He did not believe those stories, yet he was delighted to listen to those stories because they were narrated in a very varied style. They were narrated to him in unimitable way. Unimitable means original way. And that is why Mahindra liked those stories told by his cook Eastwood. Right? Simply it is uh, written in the chapter that Eastwood was actually a great entertainer for Mahindra. And he used to make up for the absence of a TV set in Mahindra's living quarters. So students, now let us move on to the second point that is story of a ghost and Mahindra's reactions. So one fine morning, uh, Mahindra was ready to leave for his work. It was Ishwaran who just asked him uh, uh, whether he should cook something special tonight. He also gave the reasons for cooking something special that day. It was because uh, he tell that uh, as per the traditions, uh, on that day they uh, were supposed to uh, cook something uh, for the spirits of their ancestors. It was the custom that demanded, right? It was the custom that demanded that they should feed something to the spirits of their ancestors, right? Uh, we just uh, call them shrads, I think, right? So uh, when Ishwaran told this to Mahindra, uh, Mahindra uh, was ready for this kind of uh, meal and uh, in the evening when Mahindra returned from his work it was each one who cooked a very delicious meal for him. When Mahindra had taken uh, his dinner
he was very satisfied with the meal that his cook had cooked and he was just lost in a reverie uh reverie here means uh in a lineage of thought he was just quite thoughtful about the good delicious food right and he was quite satisfied with the food that he uh, ate that night he also admired the culinary skills of his cook eastward culinary here means uh, related to cooking so the cooking skills of his cook eastward uh, mahendra praised uh, his cook eastward for his culinary skills so mahendra uh, was just uh, sitting and he was lost in his pleasant thoughts all of a sudden uh, eastward launched into a most garish account uh, about the supernatural things garish you mean showing showy account very bad unpleasant account so he started telling something unpleasant about uh, about the ghost supernatural means ghost right and uh, he began by telling that the place where they were living used to be a graveyard used to be a burial ground and he also told that sometimes whenever he uh, uh, whenever he came back from uh, buying his day supply uh, he often saw what the skull of human human skull right and sometimes he saw what the bones human bones right so listening to this uh, mahindra just sprang up and uh, he got frightened and he felt quite un uh, he felt quite at unease right and uh, he just did not believe what eastern was telling to him when eastern moved on to say uh, that uh, he often saw the ghost of uh, a female right especially during the full uh, during the midnight of a full moon uh, it was mahindra who just interrupted him and stopped him and said that it was nothing but a figment of his imagination whatever he was just telling it was nothing but uh, a part of his imagination he was just imagining imagining things right means the account that he was telling to his master was actually not true he was just trying to uh, say this in order to frighten him only so mahindra did not believe in him believe him and he interrupted him right uh, he the way uh, Ishwaran gave the description of that female ghost. He said that uh, during the uh, full moon night, uh, uh, he often saw the the figure of a female ghost uh, uh, whose face was quite shriveled up, right, and whose hair was matted. Matted means quite messy, and uh, uh, that ghost was actually holding uh, a fetus in its arms. so that certain description of the ghost uh bothered mahindra a lot so mahindra actually used to like the full moon night the milky uh landscape during the full moon night but after listening to this uh uh frightening account of that supernatural thing especially from his cook's mouth ishwaran he did not dare to look out of his window at night Right. He even stopped looking the uh, milk white background or milk white uh, landscape at night, which he liked early the most. Right. So uh, though he uh, was not fully afraid, but he was afraid a little, and he stopped just looking out of the window, and uh, he uh, had a certain fear about the darkness. So it is. Uh, it was during one uh, such full moon night that uh, Mahendra was lying on his. bad and uh, all of a sudden he was woken up by a very strange sound right he was woken up woken up by what a very strange sound first uh, he took this sound for uh, a cat sound he thought that it is it, it was some uh, cat uh, uh, the cat which was mourning uh, in the middle of the night mourning here means weeping crying wailing right so uh, but later he concluded that the sound was too guttural for a cat guttural here means very heavy a sound which is created by the ant part of the throat guttural so he finally concluded that it was too guttural for a cat a cat cannot make such a guttural very heavy sound right so uh, then uh, he did not just dare to look out of the window and uh, finally he could not resist to himself and uh, he just stood up from his place and he looked out of the window 
uh, at a distance he saw a dark figure. The figure was similar to uh, the one which was, ex uh, which was described to him by his cook Mahindra. Uh, the figure was dark, it was a figure of a lady and uh, there was something there was, a, there was a something like a bundle which was held by that figure of a woman. Seeing this, Mahindra was deadly terrified. He just uh, came back to his bed. He uh, could not sleep all throughout the night. It was in the morning. He woke up, right? When he was ready to leave, uh, his uh, servant, his cook, uh, Eastman was uh, standing at the uh, door uh, with his... Uh, lunch box right so at that time uh Eastwaran asked him uh asked him if he was wrong on that day he just confirmed that he himself saw that ghost of a woman in the middle of the night seeing this mahendra was uh terrified quite terrified he was afraid a lot and he decided to leave that haunted place he went to his office and he uh put in front of his boss his, the papers of his uh, uh, resignation, right? He, he just decided to leave that haunted place, right? So, uh, students, with this, this chapter comes to an end. But here, there is one more question that still is unanswered. And the question is, was there really a ghost in that, uh, in that place where Eastwaran and his master Mahindra lived? Was really there any ghost? Do you believe in ghosts? No, we do not believe in ghosts, right? And uh, uh, it is written in the chapter that there is no such thing as ghosts. It is just an imagination of a person's mind, right? It is just a figment of a person's imagination, nothing else. There is no such a thing as a ghost. So uh, what was that? If it was not a ghost, what was that? It was, it might be, it is just uh, an assumption, we the readers can just make an assumption uh, that uh, um, Ishwan was a storyteller and uh, he used to uh, he, he used to apply unimitable way uh, in his narrators, right? So in order to make his false story uh, real, in order to make his false story look more real, maybe or uh, uh, it was it was uh, he himself uh, who just uh, stood over there uh, pretending to be the female ghost grabbing a bundle of stick in his hands in order to make uh, Mahindra believe that there was really some ghost, right? So we can just assume, uh, we can just make an assumption that it, it, uh, it uh, might be Iswaran himself uh, pretending to be a ghost in order to make his story look more real and in order to frighten Mahindra. Right. So, students, with this, this chapter comes to an end. I uh, here that there is a word that I uh, forget to explain the meaning of. This is feline. Feline here means similar or pertaining to a cat. Means concerning to a cat or about a cat or something that looks similar to a cat. Here, the voice uh, that Mahendra heard at night, the morning sound, uh, is compared to the sound of a cat. So here, feline. Feline. Sorry. So, uh, students, with this, this chapter comes to an end. I have explained the word meanings to you, and I have uh, just, uh, sorry, uh, I have just explained point number three to you. I did not just mention it, then I'm going to explain, right? So, I have just explained these three points to you, and this chapter has now come to an end with the explanation of, explanation of these three points, right? Again, uh, I just want you to read the text carefully, right? If, uh, oh, one more thing that uh, I have just... Uh, missed while explaining to you. There are a lot of, uh, especially there are two phrases, quite important phrases that I have seen in this chapter. Right when you read, you will also find them. Helter skelter and off and on. These two uh, phrases are there. One is helter skelter, and the other is off and on. Right. So people ran helter skelter. This is what. Helter skelter means uh, with no definite direction. Uh, when uh, somebody is after you and uh, somebody is just going to harm you and uh, he's after you, just you do not just go to a particular direction. You start running helter skelter means in all the directions to save your life. Then there is off and on. Off and on means sometimes, right? So uh, 
there will be uh, some phrases which you will find in the chapter. You just need to read them. You just need to write them somewhere in a notebook. And then you just need to learn the meaning. You just need to learn to use them. And you must use them uh, in both the skills, writing as well as speaking. Right? So this is how we can just master the language, uh, master the English language. And this is the only purpose of us to read this chapter and the, all the other chapters, the chapters that we are going to read and the chapters that we have already read. Right. So students, with this, uh, I'll be back with uh, a new chapter very soon. Till then, be happy, keep smiling. Thank you.